has accepted Jesus as Savior, you have a powerful story. It's not a vague story. Steeped in religion and fables. It's not that. It's not that. About how you were always a good person and then you end up going to church and ever since you've been in church. No, no, that's not the story. The story isn't really about you. And it's not about you joining a church. It's a concrete story about how the Lord Jesus dealt with you. Yes, yes, yes. How he dealt with you personally. He literally dealt with you personally. Hallelujah. About how you were living. About how you were thinking. About what you were saying. It was about how you had your own standard for goodness and truth and love. But, but, but in that and how you may have had thoughts about God. You may have had thoughts about the Bible. But those thoughts were over here and God was over there. It was like you lived your life here and God was there. Because the Bible says that if we love him, we're going to be joined with him. We're going to keep his commandments. We're going to abide with him. We're going to be a part of him. So our own definition of love and truth, if we're not in line with God, it's really over here, over there somewhere. Glory to God. We had our own definition, our own standards. And how we lived our lives. I remember distinctly for myself. I was in an apartment on the north side. Uh-huh, right off of Howard Street. And I remember distinctly how God was dealing with me to align my life with his word. I didn't know how I would be able to do that. Now, this was some years back, of course, but I didn't know how I was going to be able to do that, Mother Reed. I vividly remember, how am I going to that? Because I knew I had to latch hold of Christ. I had to, you know, quit being on and off. I had to, you know, quit being in and out. I had to really take hold of him. You know, the old saying, she used to say, take hope to him. In other words, you got to grab on to Christ and hold him really tight. And I remember thinking, how can I do this? What am I going to do? Well, the Bible tells us that that process starts with two things, your mouth and your heart. Uh, with your mouth, you're going to have to cry out, God, I want you. God, I need you. God, I want you to do something with my life. God, I need to be different. God, and it can't be in your mind. Can't be in your mind. This is not a cerebral thing. This is something tangible that you're talking to the God of the creation. You kind of get his attention. Hallelujah. And you got to command out of your mouth. You got to tell him out of your mouth what you want. God say, God, I want you. My, 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 my. I want you, Lord. I want you, Lord. You got to shatter the atmosphere with your voice. Ah, oh, yes, you do. Yes, you do. I don't care if you're timid because it's not about yourself. I don't care if you got a loud voice, but you got to open up your mouth. You got to say, God, I need you. God, I want you. God, do something for me. God, make a way for me. God, I need a change. God, I need you to come in the inside of me. I need you to do a rooter, rooter job in my life. Oh, yes, you do. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. And then you got to ask God, God, I need you to cleanse me from all filthiness. Uh-huh. All of us that have dried something in a dryer, we know about that vent, don't we? We know that if that vent gets too much lint on it, there is no heat to dry your clothes. 
You got to lift that lid up, lift up that vent, right? Clean off that trap, and then for there to be some fire. <laughs> oh, God. In each and every one of us in our lives, we got to ask God to lift up the vent of our heart because the heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. The Bible says who can know the heart? Only God is able to cleanse the heart. Only God is able to get down into the innermost soul and in your innermost being and cleanse your heart from all filthiness. Ah, because there's stuff that gets trapped in your inner man. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. It can be little pieces. It can be little pieces of hurt, mother. It can be little pieces of disgust. It can be little pieces of doubt. It can be little fragments. It can be conversations that are said. They all get trapped in your inner self, in your soul, in your spirit. But God, somebody say, but God. But God is the one that's able to go into the heart. He's the one that's able to go into your inner man. He's the one that's able to deal with your inner man and cleanse you and me. My God, my God, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. <laughs> the mouth, the mouth, the mouth. You got to say it. You got you to gotta confess it. You got to talk about it. You got to speak it. You got to declare it. You got to ask God to do it for you. You got to ask God out of your mouth. You got to say, God, I want you. But if you got to believe in your heart, you got to ask God to deal with your innermost being. Deal with your heart. Deal with your heart. The Bible says you will be saved. Draw nigh unto God, the Bible says. He will draw nigh unto you. He says, but cleanse your hands, ye sinners. In other words, repent and purify your heart, ye double-minded. James, he said, if you do this, if you confess the Lord Jesus and believe and, and allow that change to occur in your life, God will step in and bring about a change in your mind. He'll transform your mind. 